Can everybody hear me? No. No. Uh, I don't know how to get this any louder. I'll just I'll, I'll speak up. My name is Paul Norberg, and I'm the treasurer of Citizens for Vallejo. Our president, Denise Martin, is unable to be here today because she had a family emergency down in Orange County, so I'm the substitute MC. I'm pleased to see all the candidates here today for this very important debate, and we have a very, very good sized audience, which makes us all very happy. I'd like to introduce the candidates first. For the mayor, we have Mayor Osby Davis and Councilwoman Joanne Chively. For City Council, we have Pastor Matias Samini, Councilmember Aaron Hannigan, Sam Kershaw, Jonathan Logan, Jess Malgapo, Robert McConnell, and Bob Sampaio. The Citizens for Vallejo Political Action Committee was established last year by a number of Vallejo residents who wanted to ensure that the 2011 candidates and incumbents demonstrate leadership qualities that we feel will positively advance the city of Vallejo. We would like to thank the Masons of the Naval Masonic Lodge for graciously donating the use of their facilities for this debate. Our moderator today is Karima Kara. She's a Vallejo resident and president of the Myra Theater Guild and serves as a member of the Solano County Planning Commission. Karima has a BS in International Economics from the American University in Paris and a JD from the University of London and is currently a financial advisor with Morgan Stanley. Today's, today's debate will have two parts. The first part will take about an hour and a half. Each candidate will respond to eight questions, but the questions will not necessarily be the same. The candidates have drawn random numbers to determine the order of their responses, so we haven't pre-selected who will get which question. Each candidate will have the opportunity to debate each other candidate one-on-one -on -one, rather than the traditional forum setting. Then the second part of the debate will be a lightning round with each candidate getting 15 seconds to respond to three questions and should take about 15 minutes. Following the debate, each candidate will have the opportunity to make a one and a half minute closing statement. None of the candidates have been given the questions in advance. We would ask you to please hold your applause until the end of the debate to avoid disruption and boos are not acceptable. <laughs> if uh, time permits, we will take questions from the audience. I believe my wife Pat passed out some cards earlier. If anyone hasn't yet turned in their card, uh, raise your hand and she'll come along and collect the card. Our timekeepers today are Carol Heppy and Pat Norberg. Uh, Pat will flash a yellow card when you have 15 seconds remaining and a red card when time is up. Uh, before we get started, I would ask everyone to turn off your cell phones to avoid any interruptions. Now for the debate rules. Karima will pose a question to two of the candidates. The person chosen to respond first will have one and a half minutes to state their position. The second candidate will have one minute to respond, and then the first candidate will have 30 seconds of rebuttal. All candidates will have equal total time, and all will have the opportunity to respond first to the same number of questions. Mayoral and council questions will be interspersed throughout the debate, but the mayoral candidates will only debate each other, and the council candidates will only debate each other. The time limits are firm, so please focus your answer on the questions posed, and no candidate will be allowed to interrupt another candidate. Following the debate, you may want to meet with some of the individual candidates who choose to stay to get answers to more questions. And today someone told me that there's a uh, article in today's Chronicle, four pages right at the front, very, very favorable to Vallejo, so if any of you haven't seen that article, I encourage you to read it. 
Now I'll uh, turn the debate over to Karima. Does it work? Hello, can everyone hear me? Okay. The first question is for Mayor Davis with a rebuttal or a response for, from Council Member Shifley. Okay. What will you do if Measure B, the 1% sales tax initiative, fails? I would do what I have been doing already, which is seeking economic development in other ways. Worked with the County of Solano to put together a public-public partnership that we're working on um, the fairgrounds right now and attempting to develop it with the County of Solano. We're into the environmental aspect of it. That would be an iconic development that would bring revenue and tax dollars to our city as well as a lot of business. Secondly, I would continue to work on Mare Island as I have been doing in the past four years, attempting to attract uh, businesses. Green tech for the, is preferable to me. Uh, to Mare Island to generate thousands of jobs and a good tax base. Um, I would also look at other ways to develop our Interstate 80 corridor. It's an asset with 150,000 people passing through our city every single day. I would try to find ways to get those people to stop and invest some monies in our city. Thank you. Whether Measure B fails or succeeds, I will be pursuing the opportunity to get new sustainable employee contracts, which I feel is the root of our problem rather than a lack of revenue. Yes, we do need new revenue, but if we don't have contracts that we can afford, it really won't make any difference. Economic development, Mare Island is perfectly situated to be a shipping hub. We have deep water at the south end. We have rail and freeway access. I would continue to work on that. However, in 2002, the city basically abandoned Lennar on Mare Island. And we need to reestablish relationships with Lennar and the various governmental agencies that delay our progress on Mare Island. I do believe that we need sustainable contracts and our council has voted on various contracts in the recent past. We've also uh, implemented measures to live within our own means. Uh, I don't think there's anybody on the council that doesn't believe that we have to have sustainable contracts. However, if you're going to balance the budget and move forward, you have to have more than just sustainable contracts. You have to have a revenue source and we have to find another revenue source to jumpstart our city. Otherwise, we will continue to have no more police, no fixing of our streets, no more fire stations, and no investment in economic development. Thank you. The next question is for Mr. Malgapo with a response from Mr. McConnell. How would you increase the number of police officers and firefighters over the next five years if Measure B does not pass? It's going to be difficult because uh, right now uh, we're fortunate that we receive a grant from uh, Kaiser Permanente which allowed us to hire three additional police officers uh, minus Measure B and with uh, the labor contract being up for negotiations around June of uh, next year. Uh, everyone's talking about sustainable contracts but our budget is flat. Uh, our budget slid from $76 million to $65 million, a $10 million reduction, and uh, safety services are already substandard. So we have to find other partners in the private sector that could perhaps follow suit with Kaiser Permanente. Without Measure B, there's no room to hire more police officers. If Measure B does not pass, then we are going to have to look at reorganizing and restructuring. The employee contracts expire for two of the unions in June of 2012. And that means that the people who are going to have to negotiate those contracts are going to have to not only hold the line, 
but probably reduce and restructure. If you read the five-year business plan, it already anticipates that there are going to be givebacks from the unions. But that means we need a council majority who is willing to insist upon that and not start giving away the store. In addition to that, we also need to bring in economic development, and I prefer to start much smaller, and that is with festivals and small business enhancement, incubators for people who want to start their own business, becoming more user-friendly in the planning department and the, in the uh, building department. So there are a number of things that we'll have to do, and the majority of the council will have to be committed to do that, which means we have to develop a concession, a, a, a consensus, and I'm very good at trying to talk people into things. That's what I also intend to do. So, so remember, you look at the budget as a scale. You have expenditures on one side of the scale and projected revenues on the other side of the scale. It's balanced. It's balanced for the next five years. But remember that the revenue is a projection. It's your property tax, retail, t retail tax, utility tax, use tax. Um, anything happens to that, should that revenue slide to the left, our budget is in peril. So, there's a lot of work ahead of us. Thank you. The next question is uh, for Mr. Kersham with a response from Mr. Logan. If Measure B does not pass, would you favor employee salary and benefit reductions? If so, please explain your answer. Okay. If Measure B doesn't pass, uh, and even if it does, what I favor are two things. Uh, one, I'm very pro-labor, and I know that when there's a warm atmosphere of uh, labor relations, a lot more concessions can be made, and will be. Um, in anticipation of the rebuilding of that, which has already taken place to a certain extent, my proposal is that um, none of the unions take an increase at all in the first year of any new contract they sign and any increase they take in the second or if it's a three-year contract third years would be based on a formula of revenue and cost of living and different indicators combined to uh, make that a fair raise if at all but in the first year I'm asking them to give up any raises whatsoever. I'm also suggesting the implementation of a deferred payroll program as I took place in when I lived in New York City and I was an employee of the Board of Education. A paycheck is deferred an entire pay period and that gives the city money to work with to pay its bills. It's kind of a loan. So those are my ideas if B doesn't pass. But uh, I support B and I hope it does pass. Thank you. Can you re-ask the question just so I can be yes, sure to answer Yes, of course. It. If Measure B does not pass, would you favor employee salary and benefit reductions? So I, I think if Measure B doesn't pass, um, we're going to have to look very hard at what we do to uh, raise the level of service to something that's acceptable. And uh, I think restructuring is something that we have to keep on the table. We also have to look at reg regionalizing uh, our public safety, uh, talking to the sheriffs, talking to the highway patrol, uh, to figure out how we can partner uh, to provide the level of service that's needed. Uh, we also need to look at how we utilize technology uh, to make sure that we're being smart on crime. Uh, we don't need to chase every single, uh, or we don't need to be in every part of the city at all times. We need to be where crime is happening, and that's how we um, keep our city safe. And the other point I want to make is that whatever we do, it needs to be negotiated with our public safety uh, unions. Uh, so it means that we have to have relationships with them so that we don't end up in a, another three-year uh, lawsuit or, or debacle uh, because we have to focus on putting people back to work and economic development is going to be our key moving forward. Thank you. Mr. Kershan, you have 30 seconds to rebut. 
I don't know if I'm that much uh, in disagreement with what he said. That's even better. You <laughs> did it in 10 seconds. <laughs> okay. uh, the next question is for Council Member Hannigan with a response from Mr. Sampaio. If Measure B passes, how will you handle the spending of those funds so that future councils do not inherit a budget out of balance? I think that's a concern that a lot of people have because this is a general tax, it's not a special tax. And it's a general tax for a lot of reasons. Statistically, it, um, there was a uh, study done in the city of Alejo and the majority of the voters would vote for a general tax versus a special tax. To, to pass a special tax, you need 65% uh, of the voters to support it. To pass a, to pass a general tax is 50% plus one. So um, th that is disconcerting, I think, for a lot of people. What I'd like to offer, and I've, I've said this at other forums, and that is that we have a, a community oversight committee put together that will look and, and work on a survey with the community to find out what are the needs of our community? What is it that we're looking for? Is it more police and more firefighters? Is it fixing our roads and our streets and, and trimming our trees uh, and, and being able to give back to our nonprofits in the community? And that's what I would support most definitely. I think there does need to be um, um, community oversight. It's been interesting with the bankruptcy, uh, how, how many of you have come out, um, you know, you're furious, you want, you, you know, why is it this way? Well, I'd ask, where were you 10 years ago while it was heading in this direction? Uh, there was a budget report in 1993 that, that showed that we were going to be in bankruptcy when we were in bankruptcy, and yet previous councils ignored that. They spent beyond their means. So um, I think it is very important that the community is involved in the process of how do we spend these additional funds. Thank you. First of all, I want to say I, I have to agree with uh, Councilmember Hannigan regarding the agreement with an oversight committee. We do need an oversight committee to mind our spending, to see where the money's going to go. But more importantly, one of the things we need to do is develop a way to watch our spending, to see where the money is going to go, not to concern ourselves with unsustainable contracts, with spending money where it does not need to be spent. We need to concern ourselves with making sure that our money stays within a framework that is stable and that it is not wasted on frivolous spending that could put us back in the hole again. One of the things that I would like to see is that we stabilize our, our budget and most of all our contracts. This is only good for 10 years and if we're not prepared to face what happens beyond that 10 years, we're going to be in the same position that we were several months ago. Thank you. I'd like to focus on creating uh, public safety that works for our community. I think that's really important with this money and also looking at um, improving our infrastructure so that we are a desirable community for our families, for families to stay here, families to move here, for companies to move here, to create that economic development that will support our community far into the future. And if we're gonna use this money right, we're gonna have to use it right early on so that when we come to year 10 and it sunsets, that we're in a much better place than we were when, in 2011. Pastor Asimimi, you haven't been forgotten, but we'll get back to you. The next question is for Council Member Joanna Shively with a response from Mayor Davis. Vallejo has an unfunded pension liability of $124 million. How do you propose fixing this problem? <laughs> okay, thank you, Sam. Um, part of the contracts that we need to negotiate is to include pension reform. As far as fixing it with a mass injection of capital, that is not going to be possible. Vallejo couldn't suddenly come up with $124 million. The thing we also need to remember with this liability is that it is growing every year. It is an unfillable hole. No matter how much we pay on it, unless we have a lot more money than we do, at the end of 30 years, we're going to owe more money than we do now. What we need to do in the new contracts that we negotiate 
are to have defined contribution pensions instead of defined benefit. What we have now guarantees our employees a specific amount of money regardless, regardless of what PERS does with that money. Stock market went down 400 points Friday. PERS gets free ride for making bad investments. The only way to correct that problem is to have contracts that have pension reform and then work on that debt. As long as we keep accumulating the debt at the level we are now, we're not going to solve the problem. And I voted to put Measure B on the ballot only so that you could vote on it. I completely and totally oppose it. I agree that um, this can't be fixed all at once. We didn't get into this problem all at once and we certainly will not get out of it all at once. We have to chip away at it. One of the things that the current council has done with the contracts with the fire department is we've chipped away at it. Um, we're chipping at it now. For example, it was 3% and 50 has been the contracts and those contracts were put in place back when Councilmember Shively was on the council and she voted to put those kind of contracts in place. Once those contracts are in place, now we have to get to the point that we change those contracts. And so we've, we've talked about 2% at 60, and so the fire department now is doing 2% at 60, and we can't change the, um, the current em employees because of PERS rules. So what the current employees have done, they paid the difference between the 2% at uh, 60 and 3% at 50 so that we're beginning to chip away at it. We're paying as we go. Well, the chipping away at least has a start, but you need to remember that those new rules that are in place at 2, at 55, etc., are not going to do us any good for 20 years until the people that we're hiring now start to retire. For the contracts that contain those pension benefits, those were voted on a long time before I was in the council. I had nothing to do with deciding that employees would have a defined benefit plan instead of a defined contribution. Thank you. The next question is for Pastor Asamimi with a response from Mr. Malgapo. Do you think the city costs for pensions should be reduced for Vallejo employees? And if so, how would you do this? And if not, why not? This depends on the budget of the city. If you have to do a cut on the city for the city of Vallejo, how much do we have in our purse, in our budget? Would you think the most important thing, what are the vital things the city need before we do a cut? How costly will it affect every common man and woman in our city? before we make a court. Because we, before we make a court, we have to think, how do we generate fund? <coughs> when we are making a court, we make court on things that are not important to the common people in this city, which is more better of than just making a court because our own personal agenda. We don't make court anyhow. We don't do any court because we want to please our friends who have businesses. I want to please our relations. We should make cut, will it benefit the citizen of this city? That's what we focus upon. And if we want to make a cut, make a cut on things that are irrelevant, nothing that are relevant. Because we have taken example, our school, stopping crime. If you make cut of not increasing the police, because we want uh, volunteers to come and do their work, those who can do the job of a policeman, the crime will increase. If you say we reduce our teachers because we want... Thank you, sir. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that the, uh, as the city council balanced the budget and as we exited uh, Chapter 9, part of that process is uh, labor concessions uh, benefit concessions made by, by labor. 
and uh, they can do more, uh, but uh, it, it's hard to uh, uh, make a decision on an, a hypothetical situation. I will have to see uh, what city staff would, uh, would bring. I don't have the benefit of being an incumbent, so I, I've not seen the budget, but uh, it, concessions have been made on both sides. Remember that our Vallejo PD was cut more than 40%, our fire was cut more than 40%. I mean, how deep can we really cut uh, before uh, it's more than just painful where we expose our citizens to criminal activity more than they ought to be exposed. Atiki is right. We need to check the budget before we make a cut. That's what I said, and uh, we have to check out because we don't just make cut unnecessarily. This was very, very it's going to affect the people. Thank you. The next question is for Mr. McConnell with a response from Mr. Kershaw. Would you agree that all Vallejo employee group contracts? should have the same level of benefits and all employees should contribute the same to these benefits? If so, why? And if not, why not? I do not agree that all employee groups should receive exactly the same benefits and that's because of the degree of risk inherent in some of those jobs. Police officers are faced with life and death decisions. I've been a combat rifleman in Vietnam and I know what it's like to be shot at and to shoot back. So the same can be said for people who actually do fight fires, and I've fought fires with the Forest Service, and I know how dangerous that can be as well. So as to those two groups, their bodies wear out a lot faster than somebody who sits behind a desk. And it's not fair to penalize them for the type of occupation that they have chosen. We do, however, need to restructure what they do so that what they do is consistent with the skills with which they are uh, required to do. As for the other two groups, some of them have received more cutbacks than other. Uh, IBEW, who represents most of the office workers, as well as people who work at the plant, uh, water plant, for instance, they've taken a 10% cut in their salary already. It's not fair to cut somebody back at the age of 50 as compared to somebody who's at the age of 20. And what we need to do is operate with a scalpel, not with a shotgun here. That means taking a look at each occupation and determining what has to be done almost on an occupation by occupation basis. It's going to require negotiation with our labor groups, which is going to be an involved, required, delicate, ongoing discussion where people will look at the issues and address the issues and not get down to a personality fight. I actually want to applaud often, but can I just suggest that maybe we hold it until the very end? Otherwise, we'll be here until about 11 o'clock. <laughs> okay, Mr. Kershan, please go. I'm in complete agreement with Mr. McConnell on this. I think that anyone who's made a major concession more than another labor group should not have to bear another burden again. I think the groups that have made less concessions and who have made very small ones should be the first ones to do it. But I also want to reiterate the fact that people who are working in dangerous occupations have more expensive benefits. They're at higher risk, they use them more often, and they're going to cost more in the end. So on the health benefit, side, there's a big difference. I think the salary side stands to be negotiated based on what somebody does, how often they do it, and how dangerous the job is. Thank you. The, re the way we're going to have to address, address some of these salaries is to take a very specific look at each salary class. Right now, the city of Vallejo is obligated to match salaries as laid out in a survey of 10 cities. And some of those cities are some of the most highest paid occupations in the entire state, such as Berkeley, Richmond. We can't afford that anymore. We have to look at our actual tax bases and what we can afford. That means a very careful occupation by occupation study and a molding to it, which means we're also going to have to have responsible union people do the same thing on their side. Thank you. 
The next question is for Mr. Logan with a response from Council Member Hennigan. The police and fire contracts will be coming up for renewal on July 1st, 2012. Do you think more concessions are needed from the employee groups or do you think the city should keep the current pay and benefits in place or perhaps you believe in an increase? Could you elaborate? I don't believe in an increase. I think, uh, I think that, you know, the rest of Vallejo uh, is suffering. Um, we're not seeing increases in our paycheck and so our employees probably shouldn't see increases in theirs. I do think that whatever we do, again, it has to be negotiated and it should be in line with whatever the market is. Right now it's based on 10 cities uh, for police. Uh, maybe we need to revisit that and see if there's another scale that's more appropriate and more in line with the services that are needed here in the city of Vallejo. Um, but uh, I, I guess in, in short, it would definitely have to be negotiated and I'm not in favor of an increase at this point. Thank you. Council Member Hennigan, before you respond, would somebody who has a blue car at the front of the building move it because it'll be towed within the next five minutes? A blue 38, 380Z. Okay, who is it? <laughs> it's me. No, is it? Oh. <laughs> you, get, you get a pass. <laughs> okay. Please, would you like me to repeat the question or would you like uh, Actually, I think I got the gist of it. Excellent, thank you. Okay, um, our, all of our employee contracts are gonna be looked at again in the next year and then in the year after that. And I think what's important to remember is when we were going through bankruptcy, uh, we were the first city to feel the economic strife that every other city has now been feeling. And without having the, the um, and we were feeling it probably a lot deeper than everybody else has. I mean, we, we're the only one that's gone bankrupt so far in, in Northern California, and if in all of California. So um, that was the result of contracts that were, frankly, unsustainable. And why would, did that continue? It continued because uh, prior councils weren't ready to address those issues. And for a lot of reasons, it was because the market did not bear a change. And until we were stripped of our revenues, we had to really address those issues. And what did we do? We cut pension with the costs with our firefighters. We cut retiree medical health. We cut health benefits for both our current and our retirees. And we'll continue to do that. Thank you. Our, our city has to be run like any other business. The amount that we can afford to pay our employees the amount that we can afford to buy supplies has to be in line with the revenue that we actually bring in to the city. So unless we're doing that, then we're not being good stewards of public resources. So I think at the end of the day, that's gonna be the type of council candidate I am. One that looks at what the revenues are and lines it up with our community priorities and also lines it up with the services uh, that are needed and the amount that we're willing to pay employees. Thank you. The next question is for Mayor. Davis with a response for from council member Shively. Mayor Davis, how do you plan on bringing business to Vallejo? The first thing that we have to do if we're going to bring businesses is we have to make sure that the businesses here are um, sustainable. In other words, we need to make sure that we retain the businesses in our current community. Businesses talk to other businesses that will first give us a, a jump start. The second thing is when I have uh, gone out, and I will do what I've been doing over the past four years, is so I've been seeking out businesses and jobs for our community. One of the first things they ask is, what about your police force? What about crime in your city? What about your schools? What about your streets? Those are issues we have to address if we're going to bring meaningful business to this community. And what I've done with respect to the schools, I'll continue to do in the future, and that is working with the schools to see how my office can work and influence whatever they need in order to uh, achieve uh, better test scores and bring more people back to the schools as opposed to exiting. The other thing is, is that I will continue to uh, reach out to businesses that we've reached out to before, try to get them to get interested in Vallejo. I have actually brought businesses to Vallejo to tour Vallejo to see if they would in fact uh, locate here. No one has been willing yet, although there's still a few people looking at Mare Island right now. 
That's the kind of thing that we have to do. So if we don't find a way to hire police officers back so that our streets are safe, if we don't find a way to fix our potholes, then we are not going to attract businesses. That's why I'm in support of Measure B. Thank you. Vallejo's recovery is very dependent on the recovery of our schools. We must find a way to work with the school district without supplanting or usurping the board, the school district board's authority. The interagency committee was formed years ago to partner with various groups, one of them being the school district. It has not been well utilized. In fact, for the first three years of the current administration, it hardly met at all. It has only recently been meeting. We also, excuse me, we do have to improve our public safety to attract other business but not the way we've been improving it in the past. We, um, we can't continue to increase their salaries. And reducing the salaries of public safety is important to getting more police and fire on the job. If everyone had a 10% reduction, we would have 10% more police and fire. Thank you. As I've said earlier, I've already began four years ago the relationship with the school district in order to improve um, our schools. And I continue to work on that, in, including personally going to the schools and speaking to students and, and uh, personally attending uh, functions for the school district to try and encourage students to do better in school. In addition to that, um, as far as the interagency committee is concerned, um, I didn't know that that was my responsibility. However, I have taken on that responsibility of the interagency committee, and I have made it something Thank that you. it I'm terribly sorry. The next question is for Mr. Bob Sampayan with a response from Mr. Galpa Malgapo. Pardon me. How do you plan to bring jobs to Vallejo? Jobs are a very important resource for our community and, and one of the biggest things that we need to do is look at ec economic development. And when I say that, we need to start looking at what we're going to do at the north end of Mare Island. Are we going to bring in sustainable businesses? Are we going to improve the island in such a fashion that are going to attract tourism, that are going to attract the dollar that's going to bring in tax money for our community? With that, are we also going to be able to improve our waterfront? If, are we going to look at the Callahan de Silva plan? and step back from it and say, hey, maybe residential structures are not going to work and that maybe we need to bring in business with uh, live-work type situations. And along with that and an improvement of our waterfront where people will come in on the ferry to be able to see a thriving downtown, that would be a wonderful thing. Because once we start improving the north end of Mare Island, once we start improving our waterfront, that is going to move into the downtown for its revitalization. That is going to attract business. That is going to attract other employees. That's going to bring jobs back to our city of Vallejo. Right now, what we're also seeing is an infusion of jobs on Mare Island. We, they have just cleared a new portion of Mare Island that is going to be um, ready for development. My hope is that there are going to be new businesses that are going to come forward to step up to the plate and invest in Vallejo. This community is now on the verge of coming together. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, if, the minute you start talking about jobs, you need, you need to kind of know who the employers are. And they are the federal, uh, state, county, city, and of course the uh, private sector. Um, and so you need to be talking to those uh, people, if you want to bring jobs to, uh, to our city. Uh, you need to talk to existing businesses, the top 100 taxpayers. We need to keep them here. We need to know what their concerns are so they don't pack their bags and leave. Um, our schools are not in the best of shape. And remember, the, the city and the school district, uh, they're connected in their, the umbilical cord. They, you can't separate the two. Bad schools, 
uh, will stop people from moving in to our city, our young families uh, uh, would leave and we can't attract uh, new families and businesses to come to Vallejo. Lastly, I think we need to look at tourism. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Lastly, one of the things that I was thinking of was Mare Island Port. If we can use the facilities that are already there for light shipping, light receiving, along with the railroad that comes into town, the, the railroad that is now on Mare Island has been purchased. And that railroad can be used to move light industry, light shipping, receiving items that can go up and down the state of California. That too will bring in jobs. And once we see an improvement in Mare Island, the waterfront and downtown, again, that thriving. Thank you. Thank you. The next, <laughs> the next question is for Mr. McConnell with a response from Mr. Logan. Mr. McConnell, how would you bring business to Mare Island? You've had some help from Mr. Sempayan, so go on. Mare Island is actually divided up into three parts, and while I was on the planning commission, I had the opportunity to study the specific plans as well as each one of those parts. At the end of where Turo is, is located, I would like to see more partnering between Turo and the California Maritime Academy to appeal to maritime industries and thus we can play off of our research and development and our educational facilities there as well. In the middle section where Lennar Raids uh, holds it, what we need to do is work more closely with our representatives in Washington, D.C. so that all of the restrictions that are currently still there are removed. We also need to make them realize that they cannot continue to build houses but need to focus more on economic development the North End, as a matter of fact, uh, tomorrow morning there is going to be a group sitting down with the City Hall to pitch a, re a new development at that location which would appeal to uh, tourism as well. So tourism can help to bring in some industry. Overall, on uh, Mare Island, I also see uh, an appeal to, to industry that is oriented towards the maritime industry. There is one building out there that I would like to see coupled with the Blyho, uh, excuse me, with the Solano Community College and also Sonoma State to create a business incubator program where we have people who are going to study small businesses, get education out there as they're doing with the college now, but also open a retail business while they're learning this and provide taxes to the city while they see whether or not they want to stay in business. Then they can move into the community. I spent a morning hanging out with the folks at Lenore and they gave me a tour of the island and told me what some of the issues are. Uh, they said that the three words that we would want to hear for every single parcel there on Mare Island is no further action, meaning that it has been environmentally clean, uh, which means that they can put in the needed infrastructure to actually attract businesses to the site. I think that's one thing that's key. And so what we have to be willing to do as city council folks is to walk hand in hand with Lenore uh, to make sure that the state is expediting any applications that they submit to have you know, certain areas checked off as being clean, no further action. Uh, we also have to, again, there's like maybe four or five different entities or agencies that Lenore has to work with. And it's hard for them as a private organization to go to a state agency or, or another federal agency. Uh, they have to have someone from the city to walk with them. And so that would be something that I would be willing to do, uh, maybe create a small committee that would also support that. Thank you. No further action is indeed needed, and that's what we heard for eight years on the Planning Commission from Lenar. But what we also need to do is put pressure upon our elected representatives, both in Sacramento and in Washington. That can be done most effectively by elected personnel. I've lobbied both in Sacramento and in Washington, but let me tell you, they pay more attention to an elected person than they do to a citizenry. So that means as a council member, you have to be willing to go to Washington, go to Sacramento, talk to the Navy who is withholding the funds, talk to our elected personnel, and get them to put pressure to come up with that money to make that happen out there. Thank you. The next question is for Rev. Pastor Asamimi. And, okay, thank you. And the response is from Mr. Kershen. Again, Mayor Island, how would you bring jobs to Mayor Island? Before talking about bringing jobs to Mayor Island, what are the important things we need to take care of in our city? Nobody will come to Vallejo when it's full of crime. 
no, because people are moving away. Nobody will come to Vallejo where there's a lot of home closure because people are not living there. And nobody will be in the city or bring a job where people are not living in Vallejo as they want it. Is the road good? One, we can only bring jobs when the city is crime free. As other candidates have said, we need to attract a lot of jobs by speaking with the people in authority. As he said, O'Connor said, we can go to, if you are elected as a member, you can go to any length to at least solicit for job in our city. We can do that if you are elected. If the city can go, it might not work. He's right by that. And can initiate a different job, might be increasing our police. Because they were asked, as Mayor already said, are we safe for bringing jobs to our city? That is number one somebody should look. If I, somebody should bring a job, I do not say that people are being killed, shot by criminals. Nobody will love to stay here and the job, the company will be jeopardized. And when the job, company is jeopardized, you find out a lot of this is Thank bad. You. Thank you. Oh, you have no time at all. He's, it's been used up. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> you have 60 seconds. 30 seconds. One Thank minute. You. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, well, uh, first of all, and uh, this may not be popular with everyone, I'd get rid of Lenar. Because I don't think Lenar's brought one stinking job to Mare Island. In fact, the people that wanted to dry, open up the dry docks, Lenar fought them tooth and nail until Lenar's housing market collapsed out there. And then all of a sudden they said, well, we're a limited liability company. We can come right back, unlike other companies that declare bankruptcy. And instantly, in a matter of months, they're back, and all of a sudden they're commercial friendly for the first time for sense of survival. Then what I would do is I would take the island and look at it in the sections that it's already in. The north end could be a hotel, conference center, and a casino. The pier could be rehab back there. Boats could come from all over, and a light rail system ought to be developed that stops on Mare Island. Certainly, immediately, a bus. How are you gonna to get to a job out there? There isn't even a bus that goes out there. Thank you. I think say what I wanted to say by bringing, if you have a five-star hotel here with a lot of amenities, like as you know he said, we have, because we a lot of people love to gamble. You gamble off your money there. It's an interest to the city. But we can even attract some other, uh, make the Mayor Island front so attractive. People traveling, maybe, take an example, come by boat, and you see the attractive area, you would love to come the next time. It attract people. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next question is for Council Member Shively with a response from Mayor Davis. What do you plan on doing to get Vallejo to become a more vibrant, economically sustainable city during your four-year term, if you win? Well, when I win. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really broad question. Um, I'm assuming that you're talking about all aspects of Vallejo? Yes, just go all out. Okay, well let's uh, start with downtown. Obviously needs to be revitalized. There was an effort made by a group quite a few years ago to revitalize it through the arts. I still think that is a very viable way to proceed. Downtown Vallejo should not be a big box mall. It has unique architecture, and what goes in down there should be more boutique type of business, should be an arts and entertainment district with good restaurants, places for family entertainment. Um, for Mare Island, uh, I think we've kind of beat that topic to death, except the North End needs to be something that Vallejo can be extremely proud of. Um, we had a great opportunity with the Cancer Center. Unfortunately, that would be something that no other city in the area could boast of. Um, there have been some proposals made for the North End of Mare Island in response to the 
request for qualifications that was sent out. We have three of them back and hopefully at least one of the three will be viable. To make Vallejo better, we need better public safety. I think everyone agrees on that. We just don't all agree on how to get that. My idea is we need contracts we can afford. Thank you. Mayor Davis. I would continue to seek big and small businesses to, for our community. I also would like to um, further advance the uh, cause for the waterfront projects. Um, as you know, the pro waterfront project has been in existence for probably the last five years, at least the plan, and we're in the process of building the parking structure right now. When that's over, the second phase comes into play where we try to locate the post office somewhere else and build the second half of that, and then that parcel is wide open for development. And what I foresee for that parcel is what you see in San Francisco when you get off the ferry, a building that has commercial retail, that has everything you need right there because people are coming in and out of our city every single day. We need to stop having them just drop off smog and drop off some money. And so my thought is, is that once we develop that into shops and stores, a hotel, a conference center, and everything that you need right there, you will start building our city. We also have to fix our streets, public safety, and everything else that goes with it. Thank you. Well, our waterfront is part of the downtown. When the two were separated in the 1970s by the magic bullet was redevelopment, they both declined. When they became divorced from each other, they both went down the tubes. Now, the waterfront is rejoined to Mare Island. And yes, we definitely need to see the development that we've been promised for 12 years or so from Callahan to Silva. Nothing has happened. There is no parcel A development and there is no commercial development. That needs to change. Thank you. The next question is for Council Member Hannigan with a response from Reverend As Asamimi. Do you believe that Vallejo has a bad reputation? <laughs> if, no. not, <laughs> if not, if not, if not, please explain. If yes, what are you going to do about it? Um, no, I don't believe Vallejo has a bad reputation. I think the problem with Vallejo is we don't, uh, we, we're not in charge of the message that gets out about how wonderful our community is, how diverse our community is, what, what a great location we're in. We are at the crossroads of many different highways and, and freeways. And you know, what a great place to be. We're close to the city, we're close to um, Sacramento and the, and the mountains and the water. Uh, we have a lot to be thankful here. We've got fabulous weather. I mean, look at our city. Uh, this is the most beautiful view I've ever seen in, you know, in, in a long time. And so, you know, we really have to do better at getting the message out about how wonderful our town is. I think we allow other publications, we allow other people to define us. And we have to stop that. We have to start taking charge of who we are and what is our perception. I mean, look at all of you here today on a Sunday afternoon. I know there are other things that you could have been doing today, but you chose to come here because you're concerned about your community. And this is what Vallejo is about. We are concerned about our community. We are standing up. We are coming out. We are supporting it. We've got plenty of volunteers, and I see one shaking her head now, who has done tremendous work in our community and putting on um, events that, that that brings together people from different walks of life. And how beautiful is that? And we just need to continue to support uh, what truly Vallejo is, and it is a beautiful community. Our city is a beautiful city. Even I moved from Oakland to Vallejo because I love Vallejo. Otherwise, I will remain in Oakland. One thing I believe is, we as an individual speak positive and positive will follow us. When we talk positive about our city, positive things will be happening in our city. We should forget, compare our Vallejo with Oakland, Richmond, Stockton, Antioch, Vallejo is better than those cities. We should know that. And we should be happy we are the citizens of this city. Because it's a free way to everywhere. We can talk of marine world. People came from all walks of life to look at marine world, which is very attractive. 
See big dolphin and big fish are operating over there. That's an attractive place. We are very attractive. Would you think? Ask your friend, come to our city. Anything they buy here is most of the things we get an interest in. Thank you. You know, we're very fortunate. We have three colleges here in our community. We're a college town. Let's get that message out. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I, I think we no longer can put up with other people defining who we are and what we are. We need to make that definition ourselves, and we are a beautiful community with wonderful people that live here. Thank you. The next question is for Mr. Malgapo to be responded to by Mr. Kershen. How would you bring business back to downtown Vallejo? Uh, d downtown is, uh, is a unique uh, section of Vallejo filled with uh, buildings that are artistic. Uh, uh, some of them uh, need uh, work. They may not be compliant with uh, ADA or fire safety codes and things like that, but the architecture is wonderful. I, I think it could be uh, we could capitalize on that and uh, convince the landlords to uh, continue to uh, fix the buildings. Uh, we have a, a we have codes that exist, and we just got to make sure they're following the codes. Uh, if we work on improving the infrastructure, then tenants would come in, uh, and you're not going to end up with vacant uh, property. Uh, uh, you need to look at uh, uh, the traffic situation downtown. Uh, it's, I know it's been studied before and there's been many suggestions that may have come to the Planning Commission, but uh, in order to attract businesses, uh, you gotta allow for space for the customers. So uh, the other thing too is, is our school system and I, I keep coming back to that. Until we fix our schools, uh, businesses won't come here. Not downtown, not in the waterfront, not anywhere. <clears throat> okay. Well, first of all, I, I try to force some of the landlords to stop warehousing the empty property downtown. Have them put for rent signs out. There's a law in Vallejo that's not being enforced as strictly as it could be. And only now is it being talked about. And I still don't see much of a change as far as for rent signs out down there. So let people know what's available. Rezone it. Rezone it for artists and people who are not necessarily uh, for profit as their main goal. Give them a place to live and work at the same time. They're going to make some artist lofts with in an old building down there now, they should do that more, you know? And uh, then they should concentrate on family-oriented venues that bring families down there and close all the marijuana clubs Thank down you. there. Thank you. I, I was also gonna mention MMD, which is uh, related to the downtown question. Uh, we have quite a few of them located downtown and during a potluck with the Downtown Merchants Association, uh, they pulled me aside, they pulled Bob McConnell aside and they're asking us what could be done about the MMDs where people are shopping in their establishments during the day and they can smell marijuana. So that needs to be looked at if we wanna help uh, improve the, the state of our, our businesses downtown. Thank you. The final question before our 10 minute break goes to Mr. Sampayan with a response from Mr. McConnell. Vallejo streets are in terrible condition. Where will you get the funds to fix them? As with anything else, we have to concern ourselves with where our expenditures are going. We need to consider where our contracts are going, our sustainable budget, we need to be able to say we are going to spend money and allocate it to certain things. Obviously, infrastructure is very important, 
We have heard from numerous people, so is public safety, so are our schools, so is revitalization. Unfortunately, at this time, we don't have that kind of money to spend on repairing potholes, fixing the roads the way we would like to resurface. We can fix some, but I don't believe we can fix all. Are there ways that we can try to get grants through the federal government, through state and other governmental institutions that would be able to help us? I say we need to explore that to see if we can do some infrastructure repair. Because if we don't, our streets are going to get worse, worse, and worse. I don't know how many miles of roadway we have in this town, but I know there's a lot. And I know for a fact that if we don't take care of it, it's going to be an extreme expense if we don't do something soon. Therefore, I would encourage us to look at additional funding through the grant sources, maybe through uh, foundations, but we need to look at a way to, to preserve what we have in our infrastructure. Thank you. Well, all those ideas are good. Unless we bring back our prisoner work gangs, we're gonna have to think about something else as well. <laughs> And, and here's what I would propose. Uh, we're, we're currently spending about five million dollars a year on, on road repair. We need to spend at least ten, actually more. And if we don't spend it, we're going to be paying for it more in the future. So what I envision is taking some of that money from our restructuring of our public employee contracts and putting it into roads as a top priority because we have to have roads that you can drive on. If we just kick the can down the road a little bit more on delaying this, we won't have a road to drive on pretty soon. And I'm not against special taxes. If we want to put a special tax provision up, then we can say, will you approve 5% here, or 2% there, or 1% there, or a quarter percent there. But if we don't fix our roads, we're gonna pay for it later, believe me. I would agree with Mr. McConnell in that you know, there are ways of bringing back some some money to work on road repair. And again, one of those would be through sustainability of our contracts to budget specifically for infrastructure repair. So we have that money available to fix things like our roads, to be able to repair broken water pipes when things like that erupt. But we do need to concern ourselves with that. And again, I would agree with what Mr. McConnell said regarding the use of money with reduced contracts. Thank you. It's now 5.10. Um, let's take a 10 minute break. Please help yourself to water and cookies and I'm sure the candidates would love to talk to you. Please be back in 10 minutes. Sorry. Sorry.